Hey there everybody, this is Caitlin here and welcome to this week's deck profile for Card Game Tuesday, the day of the week where we enjoy all things card game related and, well, I finally kind of like muddled together a deck using one of the new rulers from Echoes of the New World. I was humming and hawing about this for quite a while now because obviously you heard my reactions, I like my girl flute, but for the, like, since I've actually pulled her, I only pulled a half art sadly from my boxes, I didn't even pull a full art from my two boxes, I got um two full arts of the light book into half arts of flute so sadly I still don't have my full art but one day I hope to get it. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to build with flute because technically speaking she's a basic water ruler so obviously blue is like going to be her main color or whatever or at least something that's going to support whatever color you have. I mean I wouldn't recommend maybe doing a mono blue build just mainly because mono builds maybe aren't like the best of their build depending on what the color is. I think mono black and mono red could definitely get away with it although blue kind of struggles I think from being a mono type of deck. There are decks that could probably make it work but in particular I think Flute needs a kind of supporting color to help her out a little bit. So for this instance I've picked light or uh, if you want to pick yeah. Uh, white, white light, yeah, I would say yellow because it's more of a yellow colour but people more refer to it as white. And so I picked white as the supporting colour for this deck. I'm calling it Flutes Crescendo, you know, because we're hopefully going to be building up to some big plays or whatever. So obviously she's really basically on this side, she's the Dragon Shrine Maiden. Her Judgment is one blue, her Energizer is one blue, and we can basically tap her and draw a card. It combos well with obviously her Water Dragon that lets them call a stone instead of her, so you can just like tap her for drawing cards. When she flips over, she's Flute Time Altering Priestess, she's a 700-800. When she enters your field, put all non-magic stone cards that were put from a field into your graveyard this turn into your hand. You release the seal abilities of water cards and spells you control, and we can pay t uh, three, which is one blue and two void, to put this card into your ruler area as a ruler so essentially flipping it back over or whatever and being able to use the ability with my mindset as it is i don't think i will be flipping flip as she is i just i'm not quite sure if i feel comfortable enough flipping her because she doesn't at this moment we don't really run too many spells that have blue seal i think the only card that we have or even cards that we have that have um blue seals are two cards which doesn't seem to be that very useful or whatever for in terms of like unlocking seals and whatnot because mainly it's like the most stuff that has seals or whatever i believe uh well it is the blue but then we've got a couple of other spells and whatnot but it's more primarily focused on light spells or whatever even though we do have more a lot of blue spells as well so i'm not too keen on maybe flipping her i would maybe keep her on a ruler side i would maybe flip her if i was in a pinch and say i needed another block or whatever because obviously even if she dies we still get the ability obviously to tap her and draw a card so i would prefer to keep her on this side at all possible so first up, we are actually going to be showing off Resonators. We have four copies of Tiny Alabaster Drake, who I like to fondly call Baby Gliber. He is a one cost light, 100-300, a flyer. Whenever this card attacks, we force for one, we roll a die, he gains that much attack until end of turn. He's mainly in here as like our chump flyer, whatever, because the other Resonators that we have in this deck do not have the ability to fly. And you know, flying flying things are can be quite annoying, especially if you have no way to block them. So. He's mainly in here in order to fly over our opponent, block their flyers if we get the chance or whatever, but also to fly over for chip damage and whatnot. So that's the main reason why he's in this deck. Obviously, since we are playing Flute, we also want to run her Water Dragon, which I kind of hope they maybe make a promo of at one point because I do not like the look of this dragon. It looks way too dopey and I don't like it. I mean, I know I think they were trying to make it cute or whatnot, but it just looks really weird. It's just, it's, I'm not too sure about it. It looks more like a cat than a dragon or whatever. I see one cost blue Resonator. It's 100-400 dragon. You may rest this recovered card to call a magic stone rather than rest your J-Ruler. So as we explained, that's why it works well with Flute. As a seal of five, this card gains the following text as long as you control five or more magic stones it gains 400 400 and flying so it's another flyer later in the game or whatnot it gains 400 400 so it becomes a 500 800 i believe which is still like decent defense considering it was a one drop starting off so we've got four of those Next up, we have three copies of Will O Wisp, which I really neat, which is a really neat resonator. I'm trying to say, got three copies of that. It is a water and light resonator, 100, 100. It's a spirit. It has barrier, which is a very nice uh, kind of addition to have. When this card enters your field, you get to draw a card. Very, very nice. And when this card is dealt damage, you gain that much life. So this is really good for like keeping on the field, whatever, and using it as a chump blocker when your opponent has something really big, because obviously you get to get that massive life gain there. And it's also, you know, it's even though it costs two, it's got like really little attack and defense. You can combo this with like another one of the spells that we're running in this deck here uh, to actually try and keep it on the field for a little bit longer. And you'll see why in a minute. 
Next up, we have two copies of Zero, the King's Blade. I kind of wanted to run more copies of this, but I only have two right now currently. So um, until we get more stock or whatever of X in the World in my locals, I probably won't be able to pull for any more of these for a little while. But hopefully we've been confirmed that our shipment is coming out. So maybe by the time this video goes up, we'll actually have X in the World back in my local store and I can pull some things for you guys. So she has a two cost resonator, two light for 600, 600. She's Will of Hope, which isn't super relevant for this deck. And she has quick cast. But the main thing we have here is that our opponent cannot draw more than one card each turn which is very nice and resonators you control cannot be returned to their owner's hand this is going to be quite relevant i feel because obviously there's a lot of bounce there's a lot of like obviously like return to hand things and whatnot especially in, if you're up against blue or whatnot but this is actually quite handy in terms of a spell that we also have later on down the line and you know zero is just a decent attacker for 600 600 Two cost is, that's usually your pretty much your standard for two cost is that especially with the effect that she's got going down Next up, we have two copies of Tsukiyomi Noble, which um, I will be sad to see rotate out. Um, this is one of the cards, obviously, that is from Alice Cluster. I tried to make this deck as mostly um, Lapis Cluster as I could. I did slip in a couple of Alice Cluster cards just to use until rotation finally happens because I didn't want to like totally limit myself, even though I am kind of preparing myself for when all these Alice Cluster cards are gone. But I couldn't resist putting in Tsukiyomi Noble because I love this card so much. She's a two-cost light resonator, two light for her. Players cannot play activate abilities of resonators they control unless they control a moon. And obviously Tsukiyomi Noble counts as a moon, so we're good there on our part. And if we pay her awakening cost of one moon, when she enters we can destroy a target non-moon addition. And if we do, we put two 100-100 counters on this card. So she basically comes a 600-800 for that. Plus, you know, she's got, still got decent stats for like um, defense-wise. So she is good for like maybe a little bit of a blocker, but she's mainly there to control our opponent. Next up we have... Faria, the Paladin of the Dawn, who, if you remember, this is from Vingo 3. Another two cost light resonator. You can see how we've got a lot more light resonators here, but we'll be coming on, on, uh, we'll be coming on to more blue resonators in a moment. So she's a 600-600, just like Zero. She is obviously a Paladin. We prevent all damage that would be dealt to this card while it is battling. So essentially it's got the Zero Ruler effect there, where it doesn't basically take battle damage or whatever. And we can also pay two light and cancel a target spell or ability targeting this card. So essentially it gains barrier for like a turn or whatever, like if we manage to to pay the two of light or whatever. She's mainly good for like um going up against um uh, big things or whatever, so she won't die straight away. I think the really the only way that you can kill her is by removal or whether I'm trying to think of the other way to kill her. Obviously, like things like that would force her to be banished. That would also be a thing. Um, maybe things that would like decrease her attack and defense, whatever. Not necessarily when she's battling. Things like that would probably be like the workaround for her. Next up, we have one of the major cards for this deck is going to be Charlotte, the Wielder of the Sacred Spear. I only have two copies of this card. I have no idea why. I figured I had actually more copies of this, but for some reason, I only have two. If I had more copies, I would definitely make this a three of, potentially a four of, but we're not too sure there. So currently, I have two copies. Um, I'll need to maybe try and pull some more Legacy Lost Packs or whatever and try and get another copy of this because I only have two right now. And it is a super duper good card. She has a four cost. She's three water and one void. She currently has zero zero, but she gets more. When she has a barrier, which is total cost equivalent to or less than number of cards in your hand, so you can see why the draw mechanic or whatever is very important for this float deck. She Gains 200 200 for each card in your hand, and when she enters your field, you draw a card. So basically, you want to have at least the maximum hand size for as long as you can um, during your opponent's turn or your turn. So that's why you want to use Flute to get your hand back up to the normal size that you need. Keep her quite buff. Obviously, the barrier will help out and everything like that. So, and then also it'll keep her quite a big resonator. So when she it does eventually swing, because you want to calculate when you want to swing with her, you don't want to leave her too vulnerable, obviously, and you want to like, um, kind of time it just right so that you know that you're swinging with like the most amount of cards in your hand before you play stuff. Obviously, because like, say if you're like, you've, you've drawn for the turn or whatever, you go to swing with her straight away, you have the potential because obviously you don't have to mulligan, like you don't have to like get rid of the cards that exceed your hamlet until the end of your turn. So you can basically draw as many as you feel like you'll be able to play like, um, say you've got, I believe hand limit is eight or is it nine? I'm pretty sure it's eight or is it seven? It's been so, it's been, I haven't had to like hit the hand limit for ages. So it's like, I'm not like quite sure. I'm pretty sure it's eight if I remember correctly, or is it seven? Oh, I have no idea. But basically you can exceed that limit, attack with her so that she's super, super strong and then play a couple of things in your hand, but still keeping it to your hand limit. So that way you can like, you know, get the most out of her. And then to kind of support Charlotte a little bit, we have two copies of Captain Hook, you know, the, the pirate, as you all know. He's a pretty big staple in Lumia decks and whatnot, but I feel like since we're running a water deck, water deck, water deck, if I can even speak, 
um, then he'd be pretty handy for this deck as well, especially considering that he's bouncing things and uh, our deck allows us to not get bounced in turn. So he's a 5 drop, he's 2 water and 3 void, he's a 1000, 1000 fairy tale. When he, when he enters, we can choose one, we put up to 2 target special magic stones on top of their owner's magic stone deck in any order, or turn up to 2 resonators to their owner's hand. So basically, it's situation based. If you know that your opponent is like got, say, um, a resonance ability or whatever, and their special stones will trigger the resonance, like say it's a jewel stone or something like that, you maybe don't want to like put back the the jewel stones, technically the special magic stones. You might want to pick two resonators, obviously. We can't pick both, sadly, but he's a decent attack or whatever for 1000 1000, even if he has got a bit of a hefty price there. Now, going into our spells, first up we have three copies of a Magic Sweets. We're mainly focusing on spells that are low cost, although you'll see that a couple of them do have a bit of a bigger cost, but we'll get to the reasons why for that. So this is just a one cost quick cast spell for one light. Target J slash Resonator you control gains 200, 200 and Barrier until end of turn. And obviously cards with Barrier cannot be targeted by spells or abilities your opponent controls. This stops things from getting Magic Lighted, this stops things from like getting uh, uh, banished or anything like that so we can protect them. I was contemplating replacing this with um, the spell, I can't remember the spell now, where it's like you force for one and it gives something flying and however much the dice roll was or whatever. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, I'll need to look it up again because it's been ages since I've actually looked at the card. But I was re you know, considering replacing it with this, but for now I'm going to keep it with this with Magic Sweets because I quite like the barrier effect. Next up, we have three copies of Truth of Time, and I actually have a full art for one of these, which is super duper pretty, and you know, since it is a fluke deck, I feel like I should include this card, because it is just super duper nice, it's just gorgeous to look at, it's just like, oh, it's so mesmerising. So this card is Ancient Magic, technically, so if we had something that was using Ancient Magic, we could play with this, but we're not, so it doesn't really matter. Basically, we draw a card, and if we get a seal of, uh, six, is it? Or is it seven? Six, yeah. A seal of six, if we break that, we get to draw an extra card. So basically, we draw two cards for the price of one will, which is a very, very nice. So we're running this at three. Next up, we have two copies of... Uh, Charlotte's Water Transformation and Magic, but considering that this has Remnant, we technically can cast this four times. So I was half tempted again to run four of these, but considering that we can play it from Grave, so we can like remove it from game or whatever to, in order to use it, that's why I felt like it was fine just to use two of them. Obviously it turns something into a 4-4 bear, and that thing was just all abilities um, it had until end of turn. And obviously it's quick cast, so you can do it on your opponent's turn as well. Next up we have Dawn of the Earth, which is a stupid good card. It is stupidly, stupidly good. And sometimes I wonder why they made this in um, Echoes of the New World, considering that light and blue came in RDE. But, you know, swings and roundabouts, we eventually got this. So it's got a huge wall of text here, so pardon me while I get through all of it. So it has quick cast. And we choose one, basically. This turn, if a resonator would be put into your opponent's field without being played, remove it from the game instead. Or, or, or uh, draw a card. Or, recover a target resonator you control against 200, 200 and barrier until end of turn. Draw a card. Or, remove all non-magic stone, non j ruler cards your opponent controls with total cost zero from the game. Draw a card. So it's basically three different effects, all of which will allow us to draw a card, which is also super duper useful. It allows us to basically, uh, for now, remove regalia that are zero cost. So basically, your Apollos, um, your Hydromonicas, your Death Scythe, things like that. But it can also destroy tokens, technically, because tokens are a cost of zero. So bye-bye elf decks, bye-bye to shadow tokens and all this stuff. So that's a really good use for it. And obviously, um, being able to recover a resonator we control and giving it an extra 2-2 is very, very nice. Could potentially use that with Charlotte, or we could use that with Captain Hook or whatever. And then obviously we have the chance to, if our opponent is kind of cheat something in, we can just remove it from the game. So say they're spinning myth something, they're using like a J-Ruler ability to stick a card in or whatever. It's a very, very versatile card. Next up, we have two copies here of Strange Miracle. I was going to say Str Stranger Miracle, but it's actually Strange Miracle. My apologies. It's a one cost light ancient magic, but it doesn't really bother us too much. You cannot be targeted by spells or abilities until end of turn we draw a card. And also it has a seal of seven. Quite big, and sadly, um, Flutes will not break the seal because obviously this is a light magic spell, but it doesn't really matter too much. J slash Resonant, as you control, cannot be destroyed until end of turn. So this is really nice, obviously, if we've got, say, quite a decent field building up and whatnot. Obviously, it really just depends on like our opponent's plays and everything like that about the state of our board but um it's a quite a nice card it's also kind of nice to even just sit in your hand and just like keep it as like stock for like keeping charlotte buffed up you don't necessarily need to play it but it's just you know good to have the option there i was thinking of maybe replacing this with um cheshire cat's assistance just because that card is also very useful as well but i'll see i'll try testing it out or whatever and see if i want to replace it 
Next up, we have Rising from the Depths, which is obviously one of the ones which got pointed out long ago when Zero was first spoiled or whatever, considering that she combos well with this card. You don't necessarily need to have the Awakening in order to get the full value from this card. I know because it has like an Awakening cost of like six, which makes it seem like it's a bad card. But technically for this deck, we do not need the Ancient Magic for the Awakening because we, we're not going for the Awakening. We're just going for casting it because return all resonators to their owner's hands. With zero on the field, we don't have to return our resonators to their hands. So it basically, basically it wipes our opponent's board, not technically because they're, they're sitting in their opponent's hand or whatever, but it basically wipes our opponent's board and lets us chip in for big damage if we've managed to keep all our resonators on the field. So say we've got maybe two Charlottes, a Hook, we've got a Faria, we've maybe got zero out there. Well, we'll have to have zero out there if we want to keep our stuff on the field. But this is quite a good combo, obviously. And this does well with like other things like buffing our things up or all that stuff. So this is a really nice spell. I'm only running two of it because obviously it is costly at four. And it's one of those things where like it just depends on the state of play, depending on how many resonators our opponent has in the field, it depends on whether we want to play it. And we have one copy here of Reunion of Sisters. It is a three cost, two water, one void. We choose one. If we control a light J slash resonator and another water J slash resonator, we may choose both. We draw two cards or turn target resonator to its owner's hand. I am thinking of maybe, if I'm not too happy with, say, um, Strange Miracle or whatever like that, I might bump this up a couple more copies because obviously this is quite a good card. It's not quick cast and sadly it's not as cheap as, say, Strange Miracle is. But on the other hand, you know, it's quite a good spell. It gives us two cards, which is pretty decent for like a three drop spell so i'm considering it i might we're not, i'm not too sure yet i want to like play test it a little bit more and see how i feel last but our first spells we have the final word which is another brilliant one drop quick cast which obviously is a vin golf 3 reprint so it is originally from alice cluster but since it got reprinted in vin golf 3 we can still use it for lapis cluster so it is a quick cast target blocking resonator that we control gains 1000 1000 until end of turn so this is really nice to use if like say we're combining this with will-o-wisp will-o-wisp is obviously just a one one but with we use we use this we block with will-o-wisp we make her a 1000 1000 which even though she has barrier, I'm pretty sure that doesn't mean that she's um, protected from our spells. I think it just means spells that our opponent controls. So I still think that we can be able to target her with this. Um, but Because obviously we control Will-O-Wisp and this doesn't exactly harm Will-O-Wisp. I'll need to double check though because obviously barrier is a funny thing. So I'm, I'm figuring that we can still target her with a spell. But it would make her an 11-11 blocker. So it potentially whatever they're attacking with, it could kill it. And we could gain a whole lot of life. Like whatever it is, we could just gain a whole lot of life that way. Which would be amazing. But obviously this is really good to use with Charlotte. Make her even more buff when she's like attacking or not. Because um, this is quick cast obviously it, ha it says it has to be a blocking resonator and it's until end of turn so there's no way for us to like use this on our turn and like swing for big damage because obviously a resonator would not be blocking it would be attacking instead which is a little bit of a shame but you know we'd swing some roundabouts we just need to like, get on with it and last but not least we have these regalia i was very content like i was contemplating not sticking any regalia in at all like considering that um like i was maybe thinking of hydromonica i'm i'm still thinking maybe hydromonica but we'll just need to wait and see we have two copies of apollo this is mainly for sukiyomi noble's awakening because obviously the bouncing to our hand mechanic doesn't work if we don't have zero like it doesn't work if zero is on the field um because obviously we can't return stuff to our hand but it is still handy if like on the off chance that we don't have zero and that way we can bring stuff to our hand safely and then i included ragnite even though it's a three cost regalia because it has the ability to produce well of any color and then if we like pay two light and banish this card we can recover our j ruler which i believe um this counts for when flute is on this side i'm not too sure because well actually i don't think so because um this says ruler on this side and the other side is j ruler so i don't think it would count for getting another draw card or whatever like from doing that but it would be handy um if we like if we had her flipped or whatever we maybe swung with her or whatever we gave her flying from apollo we swung with her in the air we could use this to recover her and then we could maybe flip her back over to this side to protect her and stuff like that i don't know we can have some silly combos like that but obviously this is also good because it produces any color of will so it helps considering that our stones are like a little bit sketchy a little bit like just considering um our kind of card pool or whatever i try to like make it seem viable to run so basically what we have here is we have four um magic stone of light vapors which is obviously the one that produces light or blue we have three copies of rulers memoria which is kind of why i wanted to include the regalia considering that we only have three regalia in the whole deck it is going to be pretty tricky if we end up calling this turn one and we don't have regalia in play so that's why i'm kind of going to hoping to like mill for apollo at least or maybe even second hydromonica or death scythe 
not too sure yet. We have one copy of the Stone of the Dragonoids, mainly because I didn't want to run too many copies of this because I don't like losing life too much. So I only stuck in one. And I put in two copies of the Magic Stone or, or Radiant Wave, which is the counter one essentially where it produces light normally and you can remove a counter from it and it can produce blue. I only have two copies of this, otherwise I might have included more of it. But then at the same time, it's like, well, then I'd have like a huge stone base of just light. But at the same time, it's just like, it is handy. I might put in more of this if I manage to get more copies of it. I'm going to keep an eye out for uh, Big Orbit sales or whatever to see if I can pick up more of these stones because they are quite useful and they're going to be in the game for like a while now since they're lapis cluster so fingers crossed we can get more copies of them but i hope you've enjoyed this deck profile guys for flutes crescendo let me know what you're thinking of building with flute do you think that she should be with other colors i was contemplating doing like a blue darkness build or whatever with her but um i might do that again another time or even like a blue green deck like you know like a not a, not the same basis for a kagya deck but like kind of something different a little bit with her so i'm not too sure we'll see what happens we'll see what happens so let me know guys what you thought of the deck down below and until next time i will see you all later